would you guys believe that I plugged in my camera to vlog and the battery was dead? Off to a great start, guys. Thank goodness for camera batteries that plug into the wall, just saying. But anyway, we are here finally for the second vlog in writing the sequel to my YA fantasy on Wings of Ash and Dust. And the last time I talked to you guys, it was February 11th, and now it is the 24th. But the good news is I have made progress, even if I didn't get to vlog it, and I am vlogging today. So I'll catch you guys up a little bit, and then uh, we'll see what I can get done before the end of the day. Last time we left off, I was trying to finish the outline for book two, but I had also started watching this playlist by Abby Emmons and her videos all about the plot points that she uses when she's outlining using the 3x structure. And they were proving super, super helpful, but the thing was that watching all of them and taking notes on them was slowing me down and getting the actual outline done. And so what I ended up doing is actually just kind of processing and listening to them without taking notes while I was getting some other stuff done, like chores and stuff. But then I decided that, you know what, I just need to finish what I have because what I really want to do, which I was telling you guys before, is actually send a kind of narrative version of my outline, more like a synopsis, to my critique partners to see what they think of the direction of the story and the basic plot points of the story before I actually start drafting. And again, if this is a method you've never heard before, I do explain a ton about it in this video right here. So I'll link that down below if you want to check it out. But that's been really my main goal. And so I was thinking, you know what, it's probably a better use of my time to just get my current outline situated so that it is readable and not like Britney bullet point gibberish for my critique partners and then just send it to them. They'll probably take a couple days to get through it anyway. And then while they are going through that, I can go back through Abby's videos, take more thorough notes and apply what I'm learning to my outline along with whatever feedback I get from my critique partners. And this past Tuesday, I finally started writing that narrative synopsis for my critique partners. Hopefully you can't read any of that, so no spoilers. And the first act definitely took me a lot longer to get through. It ended up being 2,500 words, and that is going to end up being episode one. But then once I got to episode two and three, that has like a lot less fleshed out details right now. So I got through that a lot better. I'm in episode three, or for the full novel, act to part two for a grand total of drum roll please 3,798 words and I'm not even done. My poor critique partners are just gonna have a lot to read through but I do feel like even writing it out narratively is super helpful in me figuring out a few more things as I'm wrapping stuff up. So my goal between today and then tomorrow is to finish the synopsis which means finishing episode three and episode four so I can meet the deadline I set for myself of sending this to my critique partners by tomorrow. break to UPS where my mailbox is because I have like three packages waiting for me which doesn't usually happen so I'm really excited so let's go see what I got. Okay there they are. Uh, I'm probably gonna wait till I'm home to like actually open them but I'm so excited. Guys I feel like it's like Christmas or my birthday or something. There's so many gifts here. I did before I open up the other packages. I wanted to show off this maternity sweatshirt that my dear friend and fellow author Holly Davis got me. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. It says, blessed mama. It's so soft and cozy. I've been wearing it pretty much every day since I got it. So thank you so much, Holly. And then I kind of pre-opened these so that you guys don't have to watch me like struggle with that. I'm pretty sure this one is from my friend Allie. Oh, and I think it's baby stuff too. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so I have a couple onesies. One says, I am here. And it definitely looks anime, which both Allie and I, who is also coming out with a fantasy novel on May 4th. Allie and I both really enjoy anime and it looks like there's an anime character on here. I'm trying to tell if it's one from one of the shows we've talked about, but I'm not sure, but it's still really cute. And this second one, oh my gosh. We both talk about the Mandalorian. This is the way. <laughs> 
<laughs> and um, I'm pretty sure Allie like just got into that TV show. I think that was one that I was like, you really have to check it out because she loves Star Wars and she hadn't seen it yet. I'm pretty sure. Or maybe we were talking about Boba Fett. Maybe actually I'm having baby brain and she's actually been a huge fan of this the whole time. I can't remember. But I love this. This is the way. Awesome TV show. Great, great options for our little one. Thanks, Allie. I'm pretty sure these next two are from JJ Otis, who's also another fantasy author. And oh, they're in little packages. Oh, so cute. Um, okay, and then this one has a card. Brittany, I had something similar to this when my kids were babies, and it was a lifesaver. I hope you find it helpful with your little guy from JJ Otis. You're so sweet. This is not my birthday. This is like a pre-baby shower. <laughs> from all my author friends. This is the best. Ah. Ooh. Ooh, a baby crib mattress pad. And it's a perfect color because we want to do like a blue, gray, white theme in our baby room. And then the second one, I'm pretty sure is also from her because she said she was sending two. Okay. <laughs> Brittany, I saw these and couldn't resist from JJ Otis. <laughs> you guys are so sweet. Oh my gosh, yes. You guys know my favorite fandoms so well, but these are onesies of Harry Potter. And this one says, snuggle this muggle. Yes, yes, this muggle will be snuggled so much. This one says, mischief manage. We've got the Slytherin. After we've got Gryffindor and then Hufflepuff, which says, wizard in training. Oh my gosh. Ooh, and they're so soft too. I love it. And Little Wizard for Ravenclaw, which I don't know if you guys know, but I'm like probably a Raven Puff. Um, so it'll be exciting to meet this little guy and learn what personality he is and what Hogwarts house he fits into. Um, but he's so gonna wear like all of these. Oh my gosh. Eee! So thank you guys so much for all of these. It was really sweet of you. It's really fun to have like my own author mailbox that people can send me things. And I did not expect to get so many very cute maternity and baby things. So you guys are the sweetest. Thank you so much. That was a lot of fun. Hey friends, it is Tuesday. <laughs> I don't know how that happened, um, but obviously I didn't get my synopsis done and sent down on Friday. It ended up being a busier weekend than I thought. We did a lot of stuff for the nursery, which I'll show you guys a sneak peek at the end. And anytime we were not doing stuff for that, pregnancy was just making me not feel so great and really tired, and hence I am determined to finish the synopsis today but I am super cozy on the couch today in a different environment. I don't know about you guys, but I think some days it's really, really helpful for me to be in my office and just focused and sitting up right and being all official. But um, today I think I'm gonna get a lot more done if I just sit here comfy cozy on the couch. I do have an exciting update though, because on Thursday I did get a lot done. I just forgot to come on here and actually tell you guys about it, but I got all the way through to episode four and my word count for my synopsis is now over 5,000, what is that, 600 something words? Oh my gosh. And I'm so close to finishing that last episode and sending it off to critique partners. But what happened is in episode four, you get to learn a lot more about a particular villain's backstory. And I had a ton of fun kind of fleshing that out with even more details than I already had planned. And even within that, coming up with a few different options I wanna to send to my critique partners to see which ones they kind of like better, which ones fit with the story better. So I got about halfway through episode four and now I just need to knuckle down and seriously just get to the end. There's a lot of details about this ending that definitely need a lot more work, but I think if I can just knuckle down today, I can get this done, send it to critique partners, get their feedback, and then keep fleshing it out from there. So what I'm going to do is just quickly review the five point finale that Jessica Brody talks about in her Save the Cat book. And I'm going to flesh out a little bit more of these ending details. And then I'm going to put all of this in a Google doc with a little bit of formatting and send it off. grabbing some much deserved lunch of leftover Chinese food because I finished the synopsis and right now I am like 
sort of rereading it and just tweaking little things to make sure that everything makes sense for my CPs. But then I'm gonna put it in a Google Doc and send it off to them. And so I will let you know when I've got that done. I'm so excited! Also, I just wanted to thank you guys so much for 11,000 subscribers on YouTube. Oh my gosh, this is like huge milestone. Your support means the world to me and it definitely motivates me to keep getting you guys content and keep getting you guys books. All right, we're back in my office because my camera battery was dying, but let's see, about four hours later, <laughs> I read through and tweaked up my synopsis. I also had lunch and talked to my mom on the phone and did other things as well during this time. But I finally am done. The synopsis is a honking 7,228 words. <laughs> then I took some time and put everything into separate Google Docs for each of my critique partners so they can leave comments as they read and I can get feedback to make this story even better. And just in case some of you wanted to use this approach with your own critique partners, I figure I'd just give you a little bit of a lowdown of how I put this together. So first of all, I just included a few notes for them in the beginning. The first one saying that I've divided the synopsis or narrative outline into episodes one through four, and then what story beats for the overall season are in each episode. So you can see here on the side, we have all the episodes and then all the story beats beats for a complete story are divided into the episodes. So we have that overall story arc for the complete serial series. If you're not doing a serial series like me, obviously you can just separate your story by the story beats. You don't even have to do that, but I decided to do that because my critique partners are writers. They know the story beats. So I know that we would be speaking the same language. If you're sharing this with someone who isn't a writer and doesn't know names of story beats, you probably don't even need that, but I thought it might be helpful for them. Then I just gave them a little bit of direction in what kind of comments I'd love to get from them, like what things they really like about the story so far and what things they think could be stronger and Thing that they have questions or are confused about or any ideas they have. I also said there's definitely some holes and things they need to flesh out a lot more like a specific romantic subplot that is continuing into book two and I've marked things I'm unsure about or where I have multiple options of where I could take the story highlighted in red so it really sticks out to them. So in addition to their general thoughts I'd love to know their thoughts on these specific spots. And then this is just a fun little tidbit that I wanted to let them know even though book one only was written from Quinn's main POV or point of view. I am playing with the idea of weaving in subchapters from the other characters' points of view. And if you know the story, specifically, I mean the other four heirs, Vale, Aaron, Hickory, and Alice. And I'm just asking, do you like this idea? Do you think it'll work? Let me know as you read. I also whited out a section where I had a suggested book title for book two, but I didn't want to show you guys that quite yet, but I will be asking their feedback on that as well, but it is officially sent to them. I'm actually excited to take a little bit of space from the story while they have it, while they give some feedback. I'll probably finish taking notes on those Abby Evans videos and working on a couple other projects that I have in the works. One of them I'm actually really excited about because while it's not actually writing a new book, it is going to be a resource. It's actually going to be a mini course for any writers who want to learn how to write and publish their own serial stories. This course would succinctly and step-by-step step kind of share all the things I learned while I was plotting, writing, editing, publishing, and marketing my first serial. And then as time goes on, I will just keep adding to the course as I come out with future serials that all current students will get automatic access to. I got really excited about the idea while talking to my friend, Caitlin Duncan, who's also a fellow writer, so thanks, Caitlin. Then I brought the idea to my writer mastermind groups to see if they thought it was a good idea. I then asked some of my patrons and some of other people I know that are working on serials if they would be interested in this and I already have a potential test group of like 13 interested people who I can bounce ideas off for this course and hopefully get the core material maybe like five core videos recorded over the next month or so and then have it available maybe even before the baby comes. So if you have thought about writing a serial or you are currently working on one and this sounds interesting to you definitely let me know down below because I'd love to know how many people might be interested. And of course I'll keep showing you guys the behind the scenes of doing this second serial as we continue these series of vlogs. Hopefully in the next one I will be drafting but before we go I did want to show you guys a little sneak peek of the nursery because we have added a ton of stuff and it's really coming together. Ta-da! Okay, I totally should have filmed this when it was like lighter outside, 
but here's the wonderful accent wall that I showed you guys last time that Ben put together. But now we have a crib that was wonderfully given to us by Ben's cousin. And we have a little dresser that's going to also act as the changing table. And eventually we'll have the actual kind of glider rocker that I've put on my registry. And yeah, it's just getting really cozy in here, getting very real. I'm currently 25 weeks pregnant, which means I only have 15 weeks until this little guy is here, which is also motivating me to try to get as much done as I can before he gets here. I hope you guys are enjoying this series so far. If you are, please give it a like make sure to subscribe share the series if you're excited I am putting the whole playlist of these vlogs down below and hopefully we'll see you very shortly in the next vlog bye guys hey!